With the Ark of the Covenant tucked away in an undisclosed location and the sacred Sankara stones returned to their people, it's time for Henry Walton Indiana Jones Jr. to face his most significant challenge ever, Daddy Issues. Junior? Yes, sir. It is you, Junior. Don't call me that, please. In Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Indiana's father, Henry Jones Sr., played by the legendary Sean Connery, embark on an epic adventure to recover the Holy Grail, a fabled chalice with extraordinary powers, said to grant eternal youth and infinite sustenance to those who drink from the hallowed cup. Join us for another race against time as we shape history alongside one of cinema's greatest heroes of the silver screen with a look back at Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Dad, we're well out of range. <laughs> Five years after disturbing audiences with a decidedly darker adventure in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, the dynamic duo of Steven Spielberg and George Lucas returned for the third film in a loosely planned trilogy. With cannibals and a cursed chest in Indy's rear view, the time for Nazis to march back onto the franchise had come. In Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Indy becomes involved in a quest to recover the Holy Grail after his father, a Scottish professor of medieval literature and expert on Grail lore, vanishes while searching for the ancient artifact. The rollicking threequel harkens back to Spielberg's Raiders of the Lost Ark in tone, with humor and exploration of character driving the story instead of problematic portrayals of foreign cultures and nightmarish villains bathed in blood and wearing the bones of fallen followers. I gotta tell you something. Don't get sentimental now, Dad. Save it till we get out of here. The floor's on fire. See? What? And the chair. Move! Who are you? Move! Watching the table! Ah! Oh, damn! The script mostly forgoes Indy's Bond-like playboy persona in favor of an adversarial father-son dynamic shared between Ford and Connery. I consider Indy and Henry's push-and-pull report a breath of fresh air after two movies of our hero laying it on thick for the ladies. Henry's judgmental demeanor reduces Indy to a more childlike state, inspiring him to pull out all the stops to impress the man who helped bring him into the world. This unique position makes Indy try all the harder to sidestep danger, outsmart his adversaries, and lay the smack down on Nazi scum. <laughs> No ticket. As we've mentioned in our previous video for Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Indy's third chapter's initial idea involved exploring a haunted house. However, Spielberg rejected the concept, finding it too similar to his work on 1982's Poltergeist. While speaking to reporters about The Last Crusade, Spielberg said he could feel himself consciously regressing while preparing to make the movie. He considered it a step back in his artistic journey. The Last Crusade also cost the director two opportunities, the chance to direct Big, starring Tom Hanks, and being the man behind the camera for Rain Man, the emotional drama starring Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman as brothers on a cross-country trip. Uh-oh, fart. Yeah, Charlie Babbitt, I'll uh -oh, hold. Fart. Did you fart, Ray? Fart. Did you fart? Fart. Oh, How can you stand that? I don't mind it. Spielberg all but groaned when George Lucas proposed the haunted house idea. The eight-page draft, Indiana Jones and the Monkey King, found Indy encountering a specter in Scotland before the mission took him to Africa, where the Fountain of Youth would test him with the enticing power of immortality. Still, Lucas's Monkey King project lasted longer than you'd think. The studio hired Home Alone, Mrs. Doubtfire, and Adventures in Babysitting director Chris Columbus to write the script. When he submitted his first draft, he changed significant plot elements to include a garden of immortal peaches, an enchanted locale from Chinese mythology. Chinese artists often use peaches to symbolize immortality or a desire to live well. While Spielberg would eventually pluck the peach from Indy's hand, Columbus's draft describes an outlandish outing for the intrepid explorer. The tale begins in India, circa 1937, with Indy engaged in a paranormal battle with Baron Seamus Seagrove III in Scotland. After exercising
emphasizing the malevolent rape. Indy advances to Mozambique, where a 200-year-old pygmy accompanies Dr. Claire Clark. When the pygmy becomes kidnapped by Nazis, Indy, Dr. Clark, and Scraggy Briar, a friend of Indy's, set out to rescue him. Indy dies near the mission's climax, but the Monkey King resurrects him. When the filmmakers asked Columbus to draft another script, he eventually produced another unused idea. In the second attempt, Columbus pitted Indy against Dash, a refugee bar owner who controls a group of Nazi soldiers. The story included the Monkey King as a villainous overseer of a heady plot. In the draft, the Monkey King forces Indy and Dash to play a game of chess with humans as pieces on the board. When a human player needed to exit the board, they'd fall to pieces before the player's eyes. No! Don't move! Don't forget, we're still playing. While scouting locations to film Columbus's Monkey King plot, Spielberg and Lucas pulled the plug, citing the story's negative depiction of African culture as their reason to abandon the idea. Spielberg also thought the script was illogical. As a result, he expressed little desire to direct a film that made him feel old and out of touch. Already exhausted by the creative process, Spielberg floated the idea of giving Indy's father, Henry, a proper introduction. Unconvinced, Lucas insisted the Grail should be the story's focus. When Spielberg noted that Indy and Henry's oil and water rivalry would be a better vehicle for the mission. Lucas eventually surrendered. Those people are trying to kill us! I know, Dad! It's a good experience for me. It happens to me all the time. With Columbus out, Lethal Weapon and the Lost Boys writer Jeffrey Baum began writing a script. Baum understood the assignment from the jump saying Indy and Henry's reconciliation should be the film's heart. The first draft featured Henry in a more significant role, as he searches for the Grail alongside Elsa, a Nazi in disguise with plans to steal the Grail. Meanwhile, the finale found Indy battling the Grail Knight instead of the final product's more mythical and philosophical approach. At Sean Connery's request, Baum's second draft included comedic elements, resulting in a more light-hearted approach to Indy and Henry's familial squabbling. The new script also introduced a prologue, featuring Indiana as a young Boy Scout, played by the late River Phoenix in the film's final version. You got heart, kid, but that belongs to me. It belongs to Coronado. Coronado's dead, and so are all of his grandchildren. This should be in a museum. Tom Stoppard, under the pen name Barry Watson, helped revise the story by Lucas and Menno Mayes. Through dialogue tweaks and character introductions, it was Stoppard's idea to include the scene where young Indy acquires his iconic hat after an altercation with a group of thieves. With Ford already on board to reprise the role of Indiana Jones, Spielberg needed a handful of new players to act as characters in the hunt for the Grail. The filmmakers considered Gregory Peck for the role of Henry Jones Sr., but Spielberg wanted Sean Connery to play Indy's Grail-obsessed father figure. Connery refused the part at first, saying franchise roles were dull, and came saddled with unwanted attention from news hounds. I'm sorry, I didn't get down what magazines you're from. However, Connery was a history buff, and when Spielberg permitted him to tailor the character to someone more nuanced, he accepted the gig. Trading Places actor Denholm Elliott returns as Marcus Brody, first introduced as Indy's affable colleague in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Brody's got friends in every town and village from here to the Sudan. He speaks a dozen languages, knows every local custom. He'll blend in, disappear, you'll never see him again. With any luck, he's got the grill already. Uh, does anyone here speak English? Or even ancient Greek? I was on earth, thank you, sir. The no fish make love in it. Playing the Austrian art professor and Indy's love interest is Alison Duty as Elsa Schneider. Elsa acts as a double agent in the film, tricking Indy into revealing information about the Grail's whereabouts before sharing its location with her Nazi comrades. You stood up to be counted with the enemy of everything that the Grail stands for. Who gives a damn what you think? You do! All I have to do is squeeze. All I have to do is scream. John Reese davies rejoins the mission as Sala, Indiana's compatriot from Cairo, and a friendly and familiar face after the dark events of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Unfortunately for Davies, 
Filming The Last Crusade was no walk in the park. Davies felt a dull pain traveling down his leg three days before filming. It wasn't long before acute sciatica struck, prompting Davies to treat the symptoms with pills and rest. Although riding a horse was not recommended for someone in his condition, Davies soldiered through, with the show must go on as his motto. You count compensation for my brother-in-law's car. Other players include Julian Glover as Walter Donovan, a snide businessman who not so secretly covets the Holy Grail. Didn't I warn you not to trust anybody, Dr. Jones? I misjudged you, Walter. I knew you would sell your mother for an Etruscan vase, but I didn't know you would sell your country and your soul to the slime of humanity. And Michael Byrne as Ernst Vogel, a ruthless SS colonel and bootlicker of Adolf Hitler. Kavork Melikin portrays Kazim, the leader of the Brotherhood of the Cruciform Sword, while Robert Edison suits up as the Grail Knight, a patient guard dedicated to the Grail's safety. You have chosen wisely. Shooting an Indiana Jones film always brings Spielberg and his crew to exotic locations. Part of what makes the franchise exciting is escaping to foreign lands, encountering different cultures, and developing stories where Indy is arguably out of his depth. Before Hollywood blockbusters became an orgy of blue and green screen technology, Spielberg brought much of Indy's meticulous sets and show-stopping set pieces to life on location around the globe. Filming for The Last Crusade began in the Tabernas Desert in Spain's Almira province. The Tabernas Desert is where the film's most thrilling chase sequence takes place, with Indy attempting to rescue his father and Marcus from the belly of a destructive tank. As Indiana dodges explosives on horseback, the tank treads carve scars into the sand, spitting debris into hazardous clouds of exhaust. Initially, Spielberg planned for a shorter sequence. However, he felt the chase could be a more intense bonding moment for Indy and Henry Sr. While Spielberg says the sweat-inducing pursuit was more fun to storyboard than shoot, its climax facilitates one of the film's most heartwarming moments, after Henry Sr. believes Indy perished during the daring rescue. <laughs> Oh, I lost you, boy. I thought you had to, sir. <sighs> Spielberg likened the harrowing tank sequence to the iconic truck chase in Raiders of the Lost Ark, saying, No action sequence that I will ever shoot will be as good as the truck chase in that first film. So I was not even trying to best that one. The truck chase is still my favorite, but the tank chase was different because it had more story to it. There is action inside the tank and outside of the tank, and there is also humor. And within the chase sequence itself, certain characters evolve. <laughs> You call this archaeology? Get out of there, Dan! Another outstanding location in the film is the intimidating Brunwald Castle, where Indiana and Henry Sr. narrowly escape being burned alive. The exteriors of the fortress were filmed at Bielesheim Castle in West Germany. Meanwhile, the interior shots took place in the UK at Elstree Studios in Burraham Wood, England. While I could spend the remainder of this video talking about a myriad of filming locations related to The Last Crusade, the one I find to be the most impressive is the Grail Temple. Temple. Planned by production designer Elliot Scott, the team built the sanctuary 80 feet above ground. Special effects artist George Gibbs, whose work you'll see in films like Brazil, Alien 3, and Who Framed Roger Rabbit, once commented that The Last Crusade is the most brutal film he's ever worked on, thanks to the Grail Temple. The Grail Temple is as big as the place of worship in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, though slightly less intimidating to operate. The team built the Grail Temple using an intricate hydraulic system to manipulate the set. It took roughly 20 minutes to reset the temple between takes, minimizing downtime while helping to keep things on schedule. Effects artists were able to move the set at different points, simulating the earthquake, gaping fissures, and crumbling floors. <laughs> Finally, because I can't let a video in this series go by without discussing the gross-out aspect of the Indiana Jones franchise, it's time to talk about the rats. Finding enough rats for the scene involving Indy and Elsa exploring catacombs beneath the streets of Venice proved difficult. The production team ordered 1,000 sewer rats from their trusty animal wrangler. However, when the team determined this wouldn't be enough, they started breeding their own in the five months leading up to the scene. The production became 5,000 rats strong, 
all squeaking, writhing, and nibbling around the set. While Spielberg lost crew members for Raiders and Temple because of rogue snakes and escaped insects, the cast and crew embraced the rats. Unafraid of the scurrying scoundrels, Ford and Duty would often play with the vermin between takes. Actually, I mean, they have personalities, rats do, compared to, to snakes and, uh, and insects. Man bites rat. <laughs> Freak accident. <laughs> While we're discussing gross-out effects, let's get up close and personal with the death of Julian Glover's Donovan. When the dastardly collector of antiquities drinks from the wrong grail, the penalty is an accelerated decomposition on par with Tot's demise after activating the Ark of the Covenant in Raiders of the Lost Ark. To create the effect, Makeup effects artist and creature designer Nick Dudman attached inflatable pads to Glover's forehead and cheekbones, as well as a wig capable of growing hair on the spot. The padding helped create enough space to make it look like Glover's eyes were receding into his skull, creating a sunken, mummified look. It took three months and multiple puppets in various states of decay to capture the shot. He chose poorly. During Memorial Day weekend, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade opened in 2,327 United States and Canadian theaters on May 24, 1989. Indy's third feature-length adventure whipped up $37 million at the box office over the four-day debut, with $474.1 million at the end of its theatrical run. The film received more praise from critics and audiences than Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, with many citing the comedic tone and on-screen chemistry between Ford and Connery as a highlight. While many fans celebrate Temple of Doom as the boldest entry in the Indiana Jones franchise, audiences delighted in Indy's search for the Grail, with some saying the over-the-top action felt exhilarating compared to Temple's dark themes and culturally insensitive content. What did you find, Dad? Me. Illumination. As for me, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is my second favorite film in the series. Nothing classes up a joint like Sean Connery, and I believe Indy is at his best when punching more Nazis than Captain America. I can do this all day. Yeah, I know. I know. While she doesn't share as much screen time with Indy as Karen Allen's Marion Ravenwood or Kate Capshaw's Willie Scott, the heat between Ford and Allison Duty's Elsa Schneider is undeniable. Ravenwood holds the key to Indy's heart, but Elsa challenges our hero while pulling the wool over his eyes. A calculating criminal is a fine foil for the brave explorer, but Elsa taught Indy lessons about trust he'll never forget. You should have listened to your father. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade includes some of the franchise's most thrilling action sequences. Are you crazy? Don't go between them! Go between them! Are you crazy? From the sensational tank chase to the narrow escape from Brunewald Castle, the film is a marvelous blend of practical effects and visions of future tech that eventually dominate the industry. The Indiana Jones franchise has never been the same since The Last Crusade, even if every chapter boasts redeeming factors. Indy's quest for the Holy Grail is an excellent trilogy capper considering the character's eternal appeal, and the Odyssey exposes the character's sensitivities in ways we've never seen. Indiana? There are innumerable reasons why Indiana Jones has stood the test of time in the face of an ever-changing industry. Few characters capture the feeling of exploring parts unknown, grinning in the face of danger, and sweeping generations off their feet with the crack of a whip. We may never know a character like Indiana Jones again, and The Last Crusade is a treasure among the hero's many adventures and a prime example of why Steven Spielberg is a master of his craft. Henry, follow me! I know the way! Ha! Got lost in his own museum, huh? Uh-huh. After you, Junior. Yes, sir. Yeah!